will be solving this problem called the removing digits. So we are given an integer n. On each step, we may subtract from it any one digit number that appears in it. How many steps are required to make the number equal to zero? So the only input is an integer n that can be as large as a million and our output should be the number of steps required. Like in this example, we can remove the 7 to get 20, then we subtract 2 to get 18, then we subtract 8 to get 10, then subtracting 1 we get 9, and then finally we'll get 0. So let's go to the drawing board and try to come up with a solution. So let's redo the example in the statement, n is equal to 27, Let's go ahead and draw the tree representing all possible states that we can reach applying the valid moves. So it would look something like this. We start with n equals 27 and the digits in 27 are 2 and 7. So we can either subtract 2 and get 25 or subtract 7 and get 20. And then again here we can either subtract 2 and get 23 or subtract 5 and get 20. But since we reached 20 here in a layer lower than this previous layer, it would be pointless in going in this subtree because anything we would obtain here, we could obtain in this subtree one move earlier. And we would keep repeating that until we reach zero here. And this actually represents the solution presented in the statement. So we move 7 and 2 and 8 then 1 and then finally 9 and as we saw with previous problems there are a lot of things we can notice here values are repeated there is a 20 here a 20 here a 20 here again and also the answer for any value depends on values that are smaller than it and all these are indicators that we should use dynamic programming to solve this problem so basically, if we solve this sub-problem for 25 and we found that we can accomplish that in M1 moves and we solve this one in M2 moves, then the answer for 27 will be just the minimum of M1, M2 plus 1 because we would require an extra move here to remove either 2 or 7. So all what we need to do is start from the bottom and find the minimum move required to find any given value then when we reach a certain value we will just find the minimum of all possible values we can reach from it by subtracting some digit and add one to it so to illustrate how we will proceed with our dynamic programming approach we will go through all values from 0 to n and at the beginning, all what we know is that we require zero steps to reach zero because we are early at zero and we don't know the minimum number of steps for the other values. That's why I represented them as infinity. Then we're gonna start from position one and we will check all possible moves that we can make from position one. And basically the moves we can make is just removing the this only digit that we have. So if we remove one, we will have one minus one, which is zero. So basically we will update the minimum number of steps we have with the value at zero plus one step because we removed this digit here. So this will become one. And again for two, we will have 2 minus 2 which is 0 so this will become 1 as well and this will be the case for all one digit numbers now moving on to two digit numbers so we are at 10 now and our possible moves is subtracting this one from 10 or subtracting 0 since subtracting 0 will not make any change so our only possible move is subtracting 1 and if we subtract 1 from 10, we would get 9. And it requires one step to go from 9 to 0. So this would be updated to 2, which is this one plus the extra move to go from 10 to 9. Now at 11, we can either subtract 1 and go to 10, or subtract 1 again and go to 10. So the only new state we can reach is 10. And since it requires two states to go from 10 to 0, 
then it would require three moves to go from 11 to 0 and as you notice here when we tried to find the answer for 11 we did not go all the way to 0 we just looked at the previous position here and since n is only up to 10 to the 6th we will have to check at most 7 positions representing the 7 digits of n so let's carry on now we are at 12 we have two possible moves, either subtracting 1 or subtracting 2. If we subtract 1, we will get 11. And if we subtract 2, we will get 10. And since the minimum of these two values is 2, then uh, the answer for 12 will be 3. And the same thing will happen here for 13. If we remove 1, we will get 12. But if we remove 3, we will go back to 10. So the answer would be 3 here again. And and the same will apply to all numbers up to 19. Now we are at 20. We can either remove 2 or remove 0. And since 0 doesn't do anything, so our only choice is removing 2. And if we subtract 2 from 20, we'll go back to 18. And thus the number of ways for 20 will be 4, which is 3 plus 1. Now at 21, we can either remove 1 or remove 2. If we remove 1, we'll go back to 20, and if we remove 2, we'll go to 19, and since 19 is the minimum, the answer for this will be 4. Again, at 22, we can either remove 2 or 2, and in both cases, we will only be able to reach 20, so the answer here will be 5. And for 23, we can either remove 3 or 2. If we remove 3, we will reach 20. And if we remove 2, we will reach 21. And the minimum in both cases is 4. So the answer for this is 5. Again, for 24, we either remove 4 or 2. So if we remove 4, we'll go to 20. And if we remove 2, we'll go to 22. And the minimum in this case is 4. So the answer for this will be 5 as well and it will be the same for all the remaining values so as you can see here each value depends on the values we can reach by subtracting its digits in this case 20 and 19 so in order to find out these values we need to remove all these digits from this value and how can we go about doing that so a way to do that is have some temporary value equal to 21 and to get the first digit, we will just take this temporary value modulo 10 and this will give us 1. And in order to get the second digit, we will just divide TMP by 10. So TMP will become 2. And again, if we take TMP modulo 10, it will give us 2. And this will work also if we had more digits. So if we had 254 instead, in the beginning, 254 mod 10 is 4, then dividing by 10 will be 25, TMP mod 10 will give us 5, then dividing by 10 we will get 2, and finally uh, TMP mod 10 will give us 2, and at the end this will become 0, and that's when we stop. So before moving on to the code, a word about complexity now. We visit all the values from 0 to n and n is up to a million and for each value we, the number of states we visit is equal to the number of digits in our value here. So for numbers from 1 to 9 we visit one uh, other state, for numbers from 10 to 99 we visit two states and for numbers from 100 to 999 three states and so on so in the worst case we can say that we visit seven states for each value and this would give us a upper bound for our complexity that is equal to n times log base 10 of n so let's go ahead and check out our code so this is our program we'll start by reading n and then I'll declare a vector of ints to keep track of the minimum steps required to go from any value up to n to 0 and I will initialize it with infinity that I defined here to be a billion then I will initialize the minimum steps for 0 with 0 because as we said we require 0 steps to go to 0 
Then I will look through all values from 1 to n included and for each value I will check the possible states I, will, I can go to by using the trick I described earlier. So I will have some temporary value equal to my value and as long as this temporary value is greater than 0 I'll get the first digit I can go to by taking the temporary value modulo 10 and I will update the minimum number of steps for this value with the number, the minimum number of steps to go from value minus TMP value mod 10 plus 1 because I would require a step to go to this state and then I'll just divide TMP value by 10 to get, to get the following digit and at the end, the value at position n of my array will actually contain the answer, so I'll just print that. So let's go ahead and submit. So that worked. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.